And now, Jeremy Irons will read an extract from Maria Stepanova's The War of Putin's Imagination. The War of Putin's Imagination. The events of today are occurring in a symbolic space, just as irrevocably as they are occurring physically in the fields and bomb shelters of Ukraine. Ukraine today is the arena of an ancient battle between good and evil, however grandiose that may sound. Its outcome affects every one of us, not just Ukraine and Russia. Evil is an old-fashioned concept. The post-war decades have taught us to see things automatically from the perspective of our opponent in order to establish understanding, compromise and dialogue. But sometimes there is no one to speak with. No, in place of an interlocutor, there is only impenetrable darkness which insists on its own outcome at any cost. Right now, a decision is being made about the sort of world we will live in, and in some ways have already been sucked into. We exist and act in the black hole of another's consciousness. It calls up archaic ideas of nationhood, that there are worse nations, better nations, nations that are higher or lower on some incomprehensible scale of greatness. But all Ukrainians, or Jews, Russians, Americans, and so on, are weak, greedy, servile, hostile, and these cardboard cutouts are already promenading through the collective imagination just as they were before the Second World War. As they say in Russia, the dead take hold of the living. And here, these dead are ideas and concepts into which new blood flows as they begin killing, just as in a horror film. Time returns obediently into that stifling past that so filled our nights with horrors. One of the first tasks of the military operation was to turn the clock back eight years to return Ukraine to the state in which the Kremlin would like to preserve it forever. Viktor Yanukovych is taken out of a trunk in the attic, only slightly moldy, ready to be placed on the presidential throne as if he never left it. And the maiden protests and eight years of democratic freedom simply fade like a dream. War in the 21st century imitates the 20th century, wants to return to an age of wholesale massacre and monstrous historical experiments. Now it is inseparable from the fashionable dependence on image, but on our screens all we see are the deep tombs of the past. Resisting today means freeing ourselves from the dictatorship of another's imagination, from a picture of the world that grasps us from inside and takes hold of our dreams, our days, our timelines, whether we want it or not. A battle for survival is going on right now in Ukraine. A battle for the independence of one's own rational mind. It is going on in every house and in every head, here as well as there. We must resist. <laughs>